Hello, welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. I'm Eric Sfuligoy, editor of Crop Life and Crop Life Iron Magazines, back in office with Laura Sowinski, back where she belongs as well. Laura, hello, <laughs> how are you? Good to see you made it back to nice and sunny Texas safely. Indeed, howdy from El Paso. And I know you've been on the road a lot, so and oh. you've got a lot to... <laughs> where, where have you been, what, what you've been up to, and... Well, I was going to say, we'll we'll get to that a little later in the video. But first off, again, I know that for the viewers who tuned in last week, we had our special edition that we were recording on the grounds at the Maggie Show. Uh, Maggie 2023, that show was a success, of course. And if you were there, great. I'm um, Hopefully we got to say hi to you, shared some bottled water. God knows we needed to share those okay. to stay hydrated in 117 degree heat index. Um but if you wanted to check something out and, and see the highlights of the show, I know I'm going to give props to our online editor, Matt Hopkins. Um, he has been famous over the years for doing these picture slideshows online that basically go letters A to letter Z of the show. And he did one for Maggie that was in this week's e-newsletter. So check that out for yourself. Again, you can check out all the ways that Matt creatively got all the letters of the alphabets uh, snuck in. Um, I'm always, because again, I know that, you know, based on um, word statistics, I've read in the past that the letters X and Z are the two most uncommon letters in the alphabet. So I'm always, always checking out to see how Matt has squeezed in those two in his slideshow. And he did, and I'll give him props, he did an admirable job getting X and Z into the slideshow for the A to Z of Maggie. So yeah. check that out for yourselves. And then before we put to bed for the year, the 2023 Maggie Show highlights, um, we did tease this last week in the video, the Showstopper Award. Now, we did hand that out at the show. And for the first time ever, we had a shared Showstopper Award. The reason it was shared is they had a product win that was on display at one booth and also displayed at another booth. And the one company actually developed the product and the other was showing it in uh, in application. So the shared showstopper award went to Bosch, BASF and Fent Agco. And that was for the one spray or uh, one smart spray system. So here is a little video clip of uh, Dave Fickle from Fent Agco and Aaron Husinger from Bosch BASF uh, accepting the showstopper trophy at the Fent booth and then talking about the highlights of the system. Hello, I'm Eric Suligoy, editor of Crop Life Iron Magazine here at the 2023 Maggie Show with the Showstopper Award winners for this year. That would be Bosch BASF and Fent for the one spray system. Gentlemen, congratulations on the win. Thank, Thank you. you, appreciate it. Yeah, so uh, we'll first start with you, Dave. How does it feel to have uh, won the Showstopper Award this year? Yeah, thanks, Eric, and thanks to everybody who voted. Uh, it was a little warm this year, more so than normal, but uh, <laughs> yeah. we're really excited to win this award and, and very honored to win it again this year. So thanks to everybody who came out and voted. And again, you. Yeah, and again, this is a, a first. We've had a partnership between two companies actually to have a, the award winner. So Aaron, if you could, um, tell me a little bit more about the features that make the one smart spraying system so special and unique in the marketplace well the one smart spray system of course we use cameras so ours has lights on it infrared and near infrared lights allows us to do a lot of things for the future also allows us to spray 24 7 if your herbicide allows so very good system we pride ourselves on leaving no weeds behind nobody using one of these systems wants to leave a weed and have to come back for it so very proud of that. I know that when I started my career, I remember my uh, general manager still telling me, he said, you know what, here's what we do. We do what's right for the farmer and we'll always be here. And that's what we're still doing today. So that's what Dave and Aaron had to say about the one smart system uh, for that was the Showstopper Award winner for 2023 at this year's Maggie Show. And, uh, and it wasn't in the video clip we showed, but uh, Dave Fickle mentioned that the uh, system will actually start appearing uh, in some testing in 2024 on Fent Rogator units, and that widespread availability will begin in 2025. So, Laura, for folks in the marketplace, 
uh, mm -hmm. at the Maggie show in 2025, when we gather in two years, uh, I'll probably be able to see that system being driven around in the uh, in the fields across Bloomington, Illinois. So, and again, I know I'm hoping that you thoroughly enjoyed your Maggie experience. So. It was great. Honestly, it was great. I, um, you know, when you get back to your office and you're going through your business cards and looking at your notes and stuff, it, it was it was great. I have a lot of folks that I want to follow up with and certainly learned a lot. So I'm looking forward to next year and maybe a little bit cooler weather. <laughs> yes, God knows. Yeah, I'll tease that in a moment. But before <laughs> we jump into my next trip, which then just took place this week, uh, you had a couple of news items that you said you would like to share with our viewers regarding uh, ag technology and acquisitions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, uh, Thursday, August 30th, uh, press release, um, EverAg, formerly EFC Systems, announced the acquisition of Roger. And um, Roger is a logistics platform for shippers and carriers in the bulk ag freight space. So um, that was um, big news for um, uh, EverAg this week. And um, in addition, another news item from the FCC. Um, FCC is announcing the recharter of its uh, Precision Agriculture Connectivity Task Force. Um, this task force was established in the 2018 Farm Bill. So um, not only are they going to um, recharter the task force, but they put a call out for, um, you know, they're trying to get a more diverse uh, task force as far as the membership in the, in the task force. Um, so they're strongly encouraging applications for membership from socially disadvantaged farmers and ranchers. Um, so we, um, at least we saw that and we thought, you know, that would be a good news item as well for uh, women in ag tech. We'll uh, post this not only on the CropLife site, but women in ag tech has a LinkedIn group and um, we will get that news up there. So um, two, two good news items this week uh, before we head into our Labor Day extended holiday, which we're all looking forward to. <laughs> yes, for some of us, the uh, the time off will be much appreciated. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and I'm I'm selfishly speaking of myself, just because I know for the last uh, eight weeks or so, I've actually been on the road almost every week someplace yeah. two three day trips and this past week of course um just after the maggie show an annual tradition is there is another big outdoor trade show that takes place and this week i was at the farm progress show which was celebrating i, I think a 70th anniversary i believe wow. um, it was really impressive yeah um and that uh, that show was uh, held in decatur uh illinois uh, and it was uh, it was very well attended. I didn't see the final attendance numbers, but um, there were lots of uh, you know. And again, it's a it's a more of a farmer facing show, mm -hmm. but it uh, actually did have quite a few exhibitors that we know. Of course, Agco was there with their Fent Rogator, which was sh uh, showing the one smart spray system on it. Mm -hmm. And our friends at Horse were there, and John Deere and Case IH uh, said hi to all of those folks. But um, one of the things, of course, any trade show, you want to check out the new equipment. And there were a couple of noteworthy things there. One was the uh, Omni Drive, uh, which was the automated autonomous grain cart, excuse me, that Raven Industries was demonstrating in one of the fields just uh, off to, of the uh, showgrounds. And then our friends at Agco launched a new sprayer under the Massey Ferguson name, which was debuting at the Farm Progress Show. And we'll have some more details on that sprayer as we move forward. And again, Laura, I know it's not really our market, but uh, the folks at Farm All had an exhibit where they were talking about 100 years of Farm All tractors and equipment. And I took lots of photographs of, you know, calling them boys with to big toys. You know, I'm I'm I, I love I love a vehicle as much as the next guy and, and taking pictures and getting to see close up some of these tractors going back to the 1920s. And what they looked like, I mean, you know, metal, uh, the seat was nothing but a piece of metal 
uh, you know, you had, you know, the, the you, you're, you, the person sitting on the tractor was outdoors. Some of these tractors just had metal spiked rimmed, no tires, no pneumatic tires, no inflated tires. They were just, you know, piece of metal basically kind of plowing its way through the field. And I, my heart goes out to these, the, these guys that were driving around on those tractors. I'm sure their backsides were incredibly sore after eight hours going through rough ground um, on some of these units, you know, when you see the the modern modern vehicles with the air conditioned cabs and the padded seats that are on shock absorbing springs wow. and, and you know, automatic uh, systems that adjust to bumps in the field. I mean, completely different world than it was back a hundred years ago, but that was an interesting exhibit and one other thing to mention, this is something I wasn't quite sure I'd ever see, but I did see it. There was a company called Rise, R-Y-S-E, that mm -hmm. was displaying, I guess what you'd call a manned drone at their booth. You actually get into this drone, this this sort of looked like a mini helicopter. If you ever saw the James Bond movie, Live, You Only Live Twice, it sort of... Mm -hmm had that that look to it you basically got a, a pilot in there and you as they said in their literature you you scouted fields you look around fields as the crow flies quote unquote mm -hmm. so that was that was kind of an interesting thing to see up yeah. close uh, i didn't get to see that demonstrated in the field but uh I, again for for folks who love um handling ag equipment uh the ability to be able to fly over a crop field and do scouting like that in something that can hover and, uh, you know, just barely gets off the ground, but still you can see above the canopy. Um, I think there may be something there. So we'll have to keep an eye on these guys going forward. So it's better than a jetpack, right? Trying to... <laughs> <laughs> Again, it, you know, I know there was a James Bond movie with one of those too, but no, this, this, like I said, this reminded me more like one of those little, little mini helicopters I've seen displayed many, many times over the years. But this had, it, it basically looked like a drone somebody would sit in, and oh. it just was really kind of interesting because I know that folks over the years have told me you would never find a drone that would be manned like this, but lo and behold, oh. somebody's come up with it. So got it. R Y S E rise. R-Y-S-E. Yeah, check it out for yourself. So. Alrighty, we'll do. All right. Well, Laura, then it is time for our favorite part of the program. Your favorite, of course. Time for Fun with Numbers. <laughs> what do you got this week? Uh, this week. Okay. okay. This this one, the, you know, this one's a little tougher. I'm I'm keeping my fingers crossed. You're gonna keep you're gonna you're gonna catch on, but um we will see. So Madeira, I got a percentage for you this week. It's 55%. Okay. All right. So 55%. Is that a the percentage of exhibitors featuring new ag technology at the last few weeks Maggie and Farm Progress shows? Okay. Is it B, the percentage of 2023 crops experiencing drought conditions? Mm. Is it C, the percentage of harvest, harvested cropland in the U.S. grown with biotech crops? Or is it D, the percentage of my time spent at airports over the last eight weeks of travel? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, hmm. I'm going to go with B. Uh, no. Uh, no, no, actually that that is a close number. It's a, it's 60% as as the number oh. on that. Um but no the correct answer this week is C. Oh, really? 55% the of the harvested oh. cropland in the US is grown with biotech crops. Now this is from a USDA report I ran across. And again, if you're looking at crops like soybean and cotton and corn, the percentages yeah. for biotech crops is much higher. It's like 80, right. 80, 90 percent. But when you mm -hmm. include all harvested cropland, mm -hmm. and that includes other crops like wheat and sugar beets and canola, and you throw them into the mix as well, it's a little over half. Fifty five percent of the harvested cropland in the United States contains at least one biotech variety growing on it. So that is the correct answer this week. See. All righty. I'll try again. 
this week? <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Laura. Yes, the Barbie Ferrari is getting further and further away. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh well. Well, you'll get them next week. I say that every week, of course, but we will we will see. So Anyhow, thanks for joining us this week for Crop Life Retail Week. We hope you enjoyed the information we shared. Hope you check out all the stories we teased for yourself in the video clips. And we will be back again next week with more information to share. Thanks for joining us this week. We'll see you again soon. If you have questions or comments about today's episode of Retail Week, contact us by email or Twitter or type your message in the comment section below. Your feedback is important to us. We will try our best to address your thoughts in next week's episode and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.